Joining me right now is WA's number one men's bowler of the state, Cody Packer. And uh, he's really elevated up the ranks over the last couple of years. So I want to get to know him, what he's got coming up in the near future, and a tip for you, who uh, anyone out there that wants to improve their bowling. So Cody, firstly, can you remember the first moment that you really got inspired to play bowls? I can. Uh, I was in Queensland, uh, Harvey Bay area. Uh, Mum was working the local bar and uh, we had to go to after school. And then one day, one of the old blokes who was running the juniors uh, asked if we wanted to have a go and we were just trying to pass the time and I got on when I was 12 and I've uh, been playing ever since. And that particular game, can you remember the moment where you just go, I'm, I'm loving this, I'm going to take it further? Uh, well, actually, the first game I didn't want to play ever again because my sister beat me. Uh, <laughs> my younger sister beat me. She was the better one at the time. Um, but probably the second week, I was playing cricket in like a reserves Queensland team at the time. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going to give up cricket here. I love this game. And um, yeah, about the second week in, I was, I was hooked. I was just, I just wanted to draw shot and just wanted to play ball. Right. And uh, what was your first tennis game? Can you remember that? First pennant game, I think it was in country Queensland, fourth division with a guy named Paddo. Uh, he would have been mid eighties. Took me under his wing a little bit. Um, it was out on the carpet green, it was about 38 degrees. And I played terrible, so bad. And I thought, oh, am I gonna do this every week? But um, yeah, since then, I think we still won the game, but I was dreadful and Paddo said to me, it'll get better than that, don't worry. Did you find any uh, any uh, toughness with the difference between age groups with the players that you were playing with and your age at that time? Um, I think I was pretty lucky. Uh, at Urangan they had a, I think it was about 20 juniors at the time and some of the older guys especially were aware of that and um, they got the right people playing with us. Uh, so the guys who wanted to, to teach the juniors and help us out. So it, it was quite easy and I was always interested to hear their stories in life. Um, so the conversation was always quite easy between the older guys and us juniors because of that. Right, and did you learn anything for the, the, oh, moving lots, forward? Lots, yeah. I learned you know, how easy we've got it in life compared to how they had it um, and what they've been through. And, and I guess keeping it simple was the message I got clearly from a lot of them was just keep it simple. Right, well keeping it simple, uh, you're married to Haley, who's a prominent women's bowler around the ranks. Uh, is there a lot of competition within the house? Oh, loads. It's, yeah. it's very well known too, um, across the state, probably across the country even. Um, yeah, we've always trying to one-up each other. So it, at first it started off just on a Monday when we practice, who could beat who? And then it became who would win more titles in the year and it would be who was higher ranked and uh, who was winning more pennant games. And it's just, we, it's a healthy competition because we feed off each other. Um, and we're in turn also so supportive, so yeah. And you've just had the birth of a new child now. Um, Jasper, yeah, Jasper, 10 months old. 10 months old. Now, with the birth of a new child, both of you got to juggle up bowls and, uh, and family life as well as work balance as well. How's that uh, operating in the family now? Yeah, I mean, before Little Man came along, it was it was easier with the two kids we had because uh, they were at an age where they'd understand and they were able to do some things for themselves. Um, it's certainly been a new challenge uh, having another dependent, um, but like anything that Hales and I do together, we've sort of just tackled it as it comes. Um, we both have full-time careers as well, uh, so just balancing who's looking after the kids, who's at work, who's training that day. It's just. We just sort of make it happen. We've got our own organising planners on our phones, and so we all know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and Hale's going to take a lot of credit for that. She's organised me more than I've organised anything else. Um, so I'm very lucky to have her. But yeah, we just we just bounce it off each other and, and make it happen. But actually, one thing I'd be interested in is uh, bowls isn't like cricket, where cricket um, you're more professional in a sense. You get paid for it. So. How important is it for your workplace to support you in your endeavours to get to the Commonwealth Games for oh, Australia? Oh, massive. Um, I am lucky, I'm in a, a very stable, uh, uh, you know, 
they look after me, state government job. Um, my team is wonderful, it's a small team, um, so we do rely on each other quite heavily, and me being away does impact the team. But uh, I've always been open and honest with them how much this means to me, and I think the achievements I've had so far just reinforces their want to help. Um, so they give me the time when I need it, uh, they let me work it up extra hours during the week if I need to. Um, but yeah, just, just very fortunate to be where I am and the team that I'm in. Right, well they're letting you go over to uh, over east to, for the Australian trials coming up. Um, you're looking forward to them and what does that entail uh, to, trying to get into that Australian setup? Yeah, well it's all still fresh in the mind. Um, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, so, you know, I'd, I'd made the emerging team um, and I just thought, you know, okay, five, six year plan, let's see what we can do, see if we can make a dent. Um, and put in the work and, and managed to get there early. So it's just now, uh, I've been in touch with Therese, my Pathways coach, um, superstar. She's been helping me understand what that's gonna entail. So I think they're gonna try and uh, implement similar greens to what they're gonna have in England. So it means using a different bowl because of the type of greens in England. They're very slow, very soft greens. You need yeah. something that turns a bit more. So trying to practice for something like that. And then also, making sure my delivery can hold up under those sort of conditions. And then I guess just getting over there and, and giving it everything I've got, um, which I, I try and do in every competition I'm in. Um, but other than that, it'd just be good to see the other members and, and you know, really get, get involved with what the, the group is. Right, so what, what do you have to change with your action to adjust to those conditions then? Uh, not to necessarily change, but just make sure it's, it's solid um, you know, not too many moving parts, getting nice and low for the slower green, so you've got more momentum through your delivery. Okay. And then also making sure you really follow through. So we're, we're quite fortunate over here that the greens are a lot quicker. Yeah. So you don't need to, you don't need to have everything moving forward for the bowl to reach because you don't need to give it as much. Whereas the greens in England, you'll see a lot of the, the UK, Ireland, Scottish players. Um, they all get nice and low, they've all got very fluent, forward moving deliveries because you've got to get a lot of pace on that bowl to get it up the other end. Right. And um, so how much how much time do you spend practicing for those conditions uh, and then changing up to practice for the events that you're playing here? Yeah, uh, I, I still try and do once a week at the moment. Um, so Andrew, the greenkeeper here at Aussie Park, has been really good. He's been able to get me some form of slower green, whether it's he just doesn't touch it for the day that I need it. Um, so I'll do that once a week, and then it sort of depends on what I have coming up. So I bet the Champ of Champs last week. Um, so I, I did a day here. I then went over to Quinn's on the Thursday um, to get used to whatever tracks they were gonna have there, which were a little bit quicker. Um, and then just, I think I'm at a point now where you just have to be aware in the mind that you have to change it up. You know, not everything's gonna be the same, not everything's gonna be consistent, and you just have to be ready for that. Um, so I practice with my Aero Optimus on Monday on the slower tracks while I'm waiting for my wider set. And then because I knew I was using my Dynamics and the Champ Champs, I took them up to Quinn's. And because of the slowness and then the quicker greens at Quinn's, they sort of take the same line anyway. So it's just being aware of whatever you're going to be playing. Right. Okay. So it's, it's all in the mind rather than the oh, massive. delivery. Yeah. I, I think people underestimate how much bowls is a mental game. Yeah. Like, Simplistically, anyone can throw a bowl, um, but that's probably what's helped me in the last three to four years is, is up here. Um, yeah. I was never the strongest up here. I always had deficiencies, but understanding that you really have to work on that if you want to achieve something in bowl. Uh, well, what techniques did you go through to work on uh, what, between years to help you with your bowls? Um, so I did a bit of uh, sports psych work, um, online reading. Um, there was a employee assistance program at work um, and that's just someone you can go and talk to about what you're thinking about how you think about things um, and then self-awareness is massive so it took me a long time to realize that I had things I had to work on um, and that was what was holding me back especially in singles play because um, you're on your own that's, if you can't do it that's it uh, yeah, but just research, um, you know, just doing a little bit of quiet time, not necessarily meditating, but just eliminating everything else around you and just getting back to basics. Uh, exercise is really good for it as well. Um, 
we just have lost a lot of weight over the last year. Yeah, last 12 months have been really good. Um, and that was just a decision I made because I was better mentally um, that, you know, three young kids, a wife, family to look after, they're going to want to run around and stuff. So that was my main driver to lose the weight was I yeah. wanted to be a better dad, a better, you know, someone to play with for the kids. So that was, that was the main driver for that. And that's improved everything else in your life? Yeah, it's just yeah. sort of come with it, um, which I guess, you know, I didn't expect anything else. My main driver 12 months ago was um, doing the best I could for WA. You know, yeah. like the Australian team is such a small team and it's such a small window that I hadn't given up, but it was more the case of, well, if I don't make it, it is what it is, you know. The, the yellow and black means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, and I knew that I could do things like, you know, get a bit, a bit, bit better shape, um, practice a bit more purposefully, and try and get WA back up the, the top end of the ladder was my main driver, Bowles was. And it seems like you have that same focus with your club as well. Um, making sure that you're, you're doing the right thing with the club and developing young players here as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Osmond Park's been really good to me. You know, I came here five years ago. Um, Gary, the likes of Gary Caffell, Pat Caffell, um, John Goddard, they saw something in me. Um, and it was at a time where I wasn't quite sure how good I could be. Um, and now I just wanted, I wanted to return that. So I don't expect anything of the players that in our top side that I don't do because mm. um, I think no matter how much work anyone else has to do you can any everyone can always get better so if I can lead by example and do the right things then when I ask the other blokes to do it they can see that well he's doing it so why well, shouldn't we um, yeah. and you know it proved fruitful this year uh, it's a long time coming the grand final win yeah um, but to win it with the young guys like Jack East who's going to be a star and, and Connor Biddle who just won the, the state mixed pairs Segan Paslich, who, yeah, uh, you know, nine weeks before finals, he was playing in our second side and he was going okay and, and the chance came about for him and he took it with both hands, that kid. Yeah, and he's yeah. going to be a star too. Yeah. Well, WA is in uh, good hands moving forward with those youngsters. Now you've got the pairs with uh, Matty Mitchell coming up as well, the Australian Championships, that's the one, isn't it? Yes. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, how, how did you and uh, Matty form this partnership and... What are you looking forward to over there? Uh, it was about, I think it was three state pairs ago. We decided to give it a crack. We hadn't played a lot of bowls together, but we sort of play the same style. Um, you know, get it head early if it's not setting up the way you want it. Um, and he's, he's a ripper bloke, Matty. Uh, and I just love the way he plays the game. So we got together, we had a couple of cracks at it, um, made a semi-final, and then the next year, I was going pretty good, and Matty said to me, maybe you should go up the other end and skip her and we'll see how we'll go. Yeah. Um, we're yeah, fortunate enough to get the win, and, and the Oz Champs been a, a long time coming with COVID postponing it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll back ourselves in, and uh, we're just really looking forward to having a ripper day, um, and you know, coming home with a medal would be great. Yeah, well, Matty's doing exactly what you do up here in Perth, down in Albany, doing a wonderful job down there promoting the, the game. So. Good luck to you both, you and Maddie. Thank you. Um, now, coming to the end of the interview, I just want to ask one tip that you can give for inspiring bowlers out there that are in the lower ranks that want to play Premier League. One tip. Uh, so from a, from a bowls perspective, um, practice is key, and I think purposeful practice is what people need to be aware of. So, you know, you can get on the green and just roll bowls at a jack for an hour and a half. Um, but I think... Well, personally, I've found benefits from having a game plan before you get on the green, having something you want to practice, whether it's, you know, rolling short and then rolling long, so doing like a, a jack and two bowl drill, which is quite good. Um, also, for leaders at the club who, who want to get better, go out and roll the jack. Don't just put the jack at each end and roll to it because that's only half of your role as a leader. Um, and then uh, from the other side of it, I think... Uh, from the mental, uh, personal side, being true to who you are um, is so, so important. So don't try and be something you're not. Embrace who you are. If you're a loud, you know, emotive person, I tend to be that way. Don't try and hide that. Don't apologise for that. Yeah. Occasionally there's going to be some consequences. Like, if, you know, not everyone's going to like you because you can be a bit in people's face. I'm fine with that now. You know, yeah. five years ago, I was like, oh, you know, 
I really want to be well liked as well. But the good people who realise what you're trying to do um, and appreciate who you are, that they'll be around. And the yeah. others, they just they fall by the wayside. And that's you know that's something you just got to accept. But the reward for just being who you are and, and being able to achieve what you can achieve because you're comfortable in your own skin. And that, yeah, that coming back to that mental side of the game, it's just so important, you know. Yeah. And and if you if you're comfortable with who you are, and yeah, I think that's that's the key. Yeah. All right, comfortable who you are, and if you're a lead, make sure you practice rolling the jack. I wonder why my club uh, teammates down there or my skippers have been upset with me. <laughs> I've never rolled a jack there. But thanks very much for joining us, uh, Cody, and good luck in your endeavours moving forward. And WA, let's get right behind him and support him, and uh, hopefully he gets in that final spot for the Australian team. Good luck, mate. Thanks, Augie. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thanks.